Good day, and thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Golden Nugget Online Gaming First Quarter 2021 Earnings Call. At this time, all participants are on the small mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. If you require any further assistance, please press star 0. I would like to hand the conference over to your speaker today, Sloan Boland, Investor Relations. Thank you. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today to discuss our first quarter results for 2021. With me today are our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Tillman Fertitta, and our President, Thomas Winter, and our Chief Financial Officer, Mike Harwell. Before we begin, I'd like to remind all participants that our comments today will include forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws. Forward-looking statements are not statements of historical facts, and a number of factors and uncertainties could cause our actual results in future periods to differ materially from what we talk about today. We assume no responsibility for updating the forward-looking statements, and therefore you should exercise caution in interpreting and relying on them. For a complete discussion of these risks, we encourage you to read the company's earnings release as well as our filings with the SEC. In addition, we refer to non-GAAP measures during the call. Please refer to our earnings release for a full reconciliation of net income or loss to EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA and for the definitions of our non-GAAP measures. And with that, let me turn the call over to Tillman for his opening remarks. Tillman? Thank you, Sloan, and thank you to all the investors and analysts on the call. Before I turn the call over to Thomas and Mike, I'll begin with a few high-level points from the quarter. First, as you can see by our revenue growth in the quarter, we feel increasingly confident about what Golden Nugget Online Gaming can be as we expand into our new geographic areas and, and continue to build our scale. I mentioned the significant and growing addressable market for iGaming last quarter. But seeing what our team has accomplished to start 2021 really emphasizes how well positioned we are with the right assets, people, and, of course, execution. Second, as you will hear from Thomas, our state expansion plans are going extremely well, and we're now under agreements in geographies that represent nearly a third of the U.S. population. But very simply, we have a very strong playbook to run from based on our experience in New Jersey, and it's our aim to recreate that same success in more and more states across the country. In Michigan, our results have exceeded our own expectations. In April alone, we grew our casino revenues there by 14%. Also, I believe our results in Michigan next year will equal our 2019 New Jersey revenues and that will turn profitable there sometimes in the latter part of 2022, way ahead of our expectations. I really can't help it, but my DNA requires that we operate our business that makes money. I've got to generate EBITDA, and we're so happy about it in Michigan next year. Lastly, I'll close by reiterating how powerful the Golden Nugget brand is combined with our broader businesses. A lot of our competitors have given up lots of equity or paid significant dollars to enhance media relationships. From a customer connectivity and loyalty standpoint, ours is so strong, we already are able to go into markets and people know who we are. We definitely have our own strategic advantage. It is Landry's massive customer base. Across Landry's, over 500 restaurants, five casinos, and many other entertainment venues across 40 U.S. states, we have access to tens of millions of customers, and we're just in our infancy of unlocking the value there. I don't think the market really understands the powerful relationship that exists and is available to GNOG through Landry's. With that, let me end by again highlighting our excitement for the future and the great results Golden Nugget Online Gaming Team has produced to begin 2021. With that, I'll turn it over to our President, Thomas Winter. Thank you, Tillman, and uh, welcome, everyone. I'd like to begin by echoing Tillman's comments. We are truly excited about the start of 2021 and have a lot of promising results that support our long-term view about the sizable growth opportunity. I will start with a quick review of our successful quarter. In Q1, 
we generated $26.7 million in revenues, a 54% increase from a year ago, and our largest quarter on revenue on record. We are especially pleased with this growth, as 60% came organically from New Jersey, while 40% came from Michigan, our first of many planned expansions across North America. Our growth was driven by continued strong player acquisition and retention while operating in the competitive markets of New Jersey and Michigan. As you will see in our materials, the growth is broad-based and continues to expand beyond the COVID-related tailwinds we experienced early last year. In fact, we grew significantly in the quarter across both new and returning active depositors. Most encouraging, our first-time depositors grew by 386% over a year ago, mainly driven by our new market expansion, which I will elaborate on in a minute. Our returning active depositor growth of 49% is just as exciting and was driven by continued strength in retention. Overall, our average monthly active depositors grew 126% over last year and 62% sequentially, which really shows how rapidly we can grow even early on in new markets. Looking at New Jersey, a major market our monthly net average revenue per user for the quarter was $550 compared to 613 in the first quarter of 2020, which was boosted in the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemic. Still, our Q1 2021 net RPU shows an increase of 6% of the first quarter in 2019 which we believe is a more meaningful comparison. In Michigan, early RPU numbers have been encouraging too. While median household income is 30% lower in Michigan than it is in New Jersey, the gross gaming revenue of Michigan's first month depositors has been only 8% short of New Jersey's over the last three months, which makes us confident in the long-term value we can create in Michigan. Overall, our nationwide casino net RPU was $434 in the first quarter of this year, temporarily dampened by the record number and share of first-time depositors, who accounted for 57% of our total active depositors. You will recall that new players both spend less initially and net RQ is also lower by virtue of welcome bonuses that are netted against revenue. We expect, as you know, net RQ to progressively ramp up closer to historical levels as new iGaming markets mature. Overall, we'd remind you of the major growth drivers we outlined in our last call. First, iGaming is experiencing tremendous growth and is still in its early innings. Second, our players are loyal and tend to increase their spend over time. And third, we continue to grow our footprint as we enter new states. In summary, our revenue trajectory continues to progress nicely in line with the 50% compounded average growth rate we have exhibited over the past four years. Building on our last earnings call, we are continuing to see immense potential in the size of the iGaming market in the US. In key states where iGaming is already regulated, iGaming revenues were more than twice that of online sports betting revenues in Q1 this year. Together, New Jersey, Michigan, and Pennsylvania already generate around $300 million in gross gaming revenue per month, 
while representing just 10% of the U.S. population. We expect more states to consider iGaming legislation as the tax revenue potential will become harder to ignore, and we have seen several states discussing iGaming legislation in the last few months, including Indiana, Illinois, and more recently, Nevada. Let's now speak to our expansion and give some updates for our key market build over the next number of quarters. We have been aggressively working to expand our footprint across North America and have now secured potential market access across 12 states, which represent 29% of the U.S. population. We are especially pleased to announce our most recent market access agreements in Colorado with Z Casino and in Iowa with the Wild Rose Casinos, where our agreements cover both iGaming and online sports betting, legislation and regulatory approvals permitting. In addition to Colorado and Iowa, GINUG has negotiated market access for online sports betting and or online casino in West Virginia, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Illinois, New York, and through our affiliation with the Golden Nugget Casinos, Louisiana, Nevada, and Mississippi. While some of these states are still pending legislation and regulation, we anticipate going live in four additional states this year. Next quarter, we are getting ready to launch online casino and sports in West Virginia and online sports in Virginia. In the fourth quarter, we plan to launch online casino in Pennsylvania and online sports in Illinois. Early next year, we look forward to launching in Colorado, Iowa, and Louisiana. We are currently in discussions for market access in several other U.S. states in addition to the Canadian province of Ontario, which we believe could open their iGaming market as soon as next year. As we ramp up our expansion into new markets, we will continue to make significant strategic investments in player acquisition. Each new jurisdiction will be slightly different, but in general, we expect our investments to result in negative EBITDA in the first two years of operation while achieving break-even in year three in iGaming states. As Tillman noted, we are excited to build each of these new markets in the same way we've grown and achieve profitability in New Jersey. I'd like to take a minute to discuss our progress in Michigan to date. First, after many months of planning, we were thrilled to launch with the first wave of operators in Michigan at the end of January. We are pleased with the steady growth we have achieved there in a market where some of our competitors have large home ground database and are spending incredible amounts on promotions and marketing. In our third full month of operation, we generated $3.9 million in gross gaming revenue which took us more than four years to achieve in New Jersey. In April, Golden Nugget was one of only two operators to increase its iGaming GGR at 14% month over month. This contributed to more than doubling our market share over the last three months, and we look forward to continuing that upward trend. Finally, before I turn the call to Mike to review our financials, I'd like to give an update on our product roadmap over 21. Since launching in 2013, Genug has always emphasized product quality and innovation as core to its business. We were the first operator in the U.S. to launch live dealers through our own studio. We were the first to launch a branded slot game called the Nugget Video Slot. And we've been successful launching new slot categories like steppers and megaways. The results of our focus on product and innovation speak for themselves with the success we've seen to date in New Jersey. 
We were recently shortlisted by eGaming Review for their 2021 North American Awards in five categories, more than any other operator. Categories we were nominated for are casino operator, mobile operator, customer service operator, marketing campaign, but also operator of the year, and a one we have already won four years in a row. In 21, we have a series of initiatives underway to build upon our product success. In Michigan, we are excited by the upcoming launch of Live Dealer, which we expect to happen in the coming weeks. We also plan to expand our content offering by launching over 100 new games from several content providers, including Evolution Gaming, IGT, AGS, Inspired Gaming, and Spin Games in the next couple of months. Content is a key driver of player activity and span, and these additions should be instrumental to our revenue growth in the state. In New Jersey, we are thrilled to announce that we will be significantly expanding our live dealer studio. The expansion will add an additional 1,800 square feet of studio space and will increase its capacity from 18 to 33 tables. We expect to complete this project in the third quarter of this year. We also plan to launch a 24-7 auto roulette which will be an excellent complement to our existing studio and casino floor roulette tables. And our focus on live dealer doesn't mean we forget about slots. In the first quarter, we launched no less than 14 new games on an exclusive basis and are on track to do the same in Q2. We are working with our technology partner, Scientific Games, on delivering a newly designed casino portal and we expect our first deployment of this will be in West Virginia. This new design will come with, with user interface improvements, a quicker navigation, and will allow us to release new features faster. Eventually, this new portal should be deployed across all states we operate in. We are also making solid progress on mobile applications. We deployed our first new native iOS app last quarter and have submitted our Android apps to the Google Play Store in Michigan and New Jersey. The last thing I would like to note is that we are investing in the in-house development of a new centralized data warehouse and business intelligence solution with the first phase to be completed in Q3. This will build further on our analytics capabilities as we move into more jurisdictions. So, to summarize, as Tillman began the call, we are very excited not only by our organic growth in New Jersey and our promising start in Michigan, but also by, by the growing list of new states we plan to launch in the coming months and years. With that, let me turn the call over to Mike to walk through our financials for Q1. Thank you, Thomas. Good afternoon, everyone. Revenues reported for the first quarter of 2021 total $26.7 million, representing a 54% increase on a year-over-year -year basis when compared to revenue of $17.3 million reported in the first quarter of 2020. Net income for the quarter totaled $69.6 million, which includes a number of non-cash or discrete items, including a non-cash gain on warrant derivatives of $81.1 million and a non-cash gain on our tax receivable agreement liability of $1.3 million, both of which were based on a change in the fair value of these liabilities during the quarter. We also recorded debt extinguishment costs of $2.2 million, including $0.6 million in non-cash expense recorded as interest expense associated with the accelerated amortization of debt discounts and deferred debt issuance costs in connection with the repayment of $10.6 million of our term loan indebtedness. When net income is adjusted for these non-cash and discrete items, we recorded a net loss of 
10.5 million during the first quarter of 2021 compared to net income of 4.2 million in the prior year period. Adjusted EBITDA for the quarter was negative 3.5 million compared to 5.9 million in the first quarter of 2020. Looking further at adjusted EBITDA, at the state level, adjusted EBITDA for the quarter was negative 1.4 million compared to 6.2 million in the prior year quarter. Corporate adjusted EBITDA was negative 2.1 million compared to negative 0.3 million in the first quarter of 2020. Cost of revenue for the quarter was 12.1 million or 45% of revenue compared to 6.7 million in the first quarter of 2020. Advertising and promotion expense totaled 14.4 million for the quarter compared to 3 million during the first quarter of last year. General and administrative expenses for the quarter were 6.1 million or 3.8 million net of stock-based compensation compared to 1.7 million for the first quarter of 2020. Advertising and promotion expenses for the quarter at 54% of revenue reflect the incremental spend associated with our launch in Michigan. We expect to keep investing significantly in advertising this year with a likely increase when we launch in Pennsylvania and Illinois later during the fourth quarter. General and administrative expenses for the quarter reflect our first quarter of non-cash stock-based compensation expense, which amounted to $2.3 million, and our first full quarter of incremental cost associated with operating as a public company. Stock-based compensation expense is currently expected to be approximately $3 million for the second quarter and $3.1 million in the third and fourth quarters of 2021. Corporate general and administrative expenses, excluding stock-based compensation, are expected to remain relatively flat throughout the year, while state-level general and administrative expenses are expected to increase linearly with the increase in revenues as we launch in new markets. Interest expense net for the first quarter totaled $5.7 million, which included $0.6 million of non-cash expense associated with the accelerated amortization debt discounts and deferred debt issuance costs. Interest expense net for the remaining three quarters of the year is currently expected to approximate $5.2 million a quarter. Gain on warrant derivatives for the first quarter were $81.1 million, which included gains on the public warrants through the date they were exercised or redeemed. As previously discussed, all of the $10.5 million public warrants were exercised or redeemed during the first quarter for cash proceeds of $110.2 million. No additional gains or losses will be recorded for the changes in the fair value of these warrants in future periods. However, it should be noted that all 5.9 million private warrants remain outstanding and we will record non-cash gains and losses related to the change in the fair value of these warrants in future quarters. We finished the first quarter of 2021 with cash and cash equivalents of $153.6 million. As you heard from Tillman and Thomas, we are very excited about our planned state expansion over the next year, and we believe our current capitalization is more than sufficient to fund those plans. I'd like to take a second to provide some additional detail on our outlook for 2021. First, as you saw in our release, we have reiterated our full year revenue expectation of 130 to 145 million. In addition to that, and in an effort to help answer questions we have received from investors and analysts, we acknowledge the challenge in modeling the pace of startup and advertising costs as we enter new markets. As you saw in the first quarter results, our EBITDA as a percentage of revenue was negative 13%. Based on our current state expansion plans for the year, we would expect our EBITDA to trend in that same range in the next two quarters and that our loss percentage will be higher in the fourth quarter, primarily driven by our launch in Pennsylvania, given the size of that market. For the full year, EBITDA should trend in a range of negative 15 to 20 percent of revenues. Finally, I'll point out two other dynamics for your forecasting. First, I'd echo Thomas's comment that we will expect EBITDA to break even in each of our expansion IBM markets 
on average of three years. Second, as you consider the initial expansion of new states, there will likely be an inverse relationship between our revenue growth and our EBITDA margin, simply because of the initial cost to build our player database. With that, I'll turn the call back to the operator for your questions. As a reminder, to ask a question, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. To withdraw your question, press the pound key. Please stand by while we compile the Q&A roster. Your first question comes from David Katz from Jeffries. Uh, hi, afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for all the detail. Um, I, I just wanted to talk about the state rollouts so far uh, and, you know, the degree to which you're finding the landscape to be, you know, as you expect it. Right, from a like competitive and ultimately a cost perspective. And second, I wanted to ask about you know, incremental state access where you've added a couple in the quarter. Um, are, you know, are the economics around those you know, staying the same or you know, how would you characterize whether they are or are not becoming just a bit more expensive? Okay, David, thank you. Uh, for your your questions, I will. This is Thomas. I will start with the uh, with the second one and uh, on new market access. So yeah, as you saw, we are we've added two new states uh, in terms of market access, Colorado and Iowa, and uh, we uh, we are hopeful uh, to uh, to announce more states in the coming weeks and months. We are working. Uh, uh, of course, on that. In terms of the economics of, of new states. Uh, the first thing is that you you really need to to look at i gaming states versus uh, uh, sports and states differently. One because when you offer only sports, um, it's uh, it's extremely difficult to uh, 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 to get to profitability. Uh, the, the the real profitability comes when you add i gaming to that. So um, when we when we have the opportunity to to operate in an high gaming state, and this is really where uh, we will want to uh, uh, focus our uh, our marketing investments because this is where uh, we will get the, the higher return on investment. In in states uh, that are offering uh, only sports, at least at start, because we we definitely believe that eventually uh, most, if not all, sports betting states will offer high gaming. Uh, it, it's more for us a way to uh, 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 to um, to get a, a presence in the state, to start uh, uh, increasing our brand awareness, to build a, a, a player database, uh, but that's really ahead of uh, an expected uh, uh, high gaming launch um, uh, later on. So if we refocus on, on high gaming states, uh, we believe that in, in, in all states, we should see the t same types of uh, uh, economics and return on investment as we saw in New Jersey. The, 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 the main difference from a state to another uh, uh, could be the, the, the tax rate. Of course, uh, if you have a lower tax rate, uh, you should expect a higher profit margin and, and, uh, and conversely. Uh, but other than that, uh, we think we'll, uh, we'll see the same type of, type of returns. And uh, what was your, your first question again? Um, I was asking about the rollout into new states and the degree to which you know you're finding them competitively to be as expected, you know, plus or minus, or any surprises there. So if we look at uh, at, at Michigan, of course, this is really early. Uh, uh, early stage of that market when we've been live for just three or four months. Uh, but I would say I haven't seen any, um, any, any big surprise. And if anything, I think the, the KPIs that we've seen were uh, slightly better than what we would, uh, uh, we would have expected. So the, 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 the first thing that was a, a kind of a surprise to, to us, but I, I believe to uh, everyone else, was how quickly that market uh, revenues uh, ramped up. So you had a lot of pent-up demand, and, um, and, um, and, and, and the fact that this market is already 
above 90 million dollar in growth gaming revenue for for online gaming uh, after four months is just uh, unbelievable. And, and that we think that it's going to be the case in, in pretty much uh, every new online gaming state moving forward uh, because we saw that in Pennsylvania, we saw that in. Uh, in, in Michigan, of course, uh, COVID-19 uh, played its role in it, uh, uh, but we believe that it's, uh, it's really uh, deeper than that. So um, that was really the first observation. The second one uh, is when we look at the average revenue per user, it's an interesting point because, for instance, when you, you want to assess the total addressable market if all states were to regulate, Basically, you have kind of two methods if you take a New Jersey as a proxy. The first method is to say New Jersey accounts for X percent of the population of the U.S., uh, and then uh, uh, you, uh, you apply your formula. The, the other way to look at it is to say the uh, median household income in New Jersey is, uh, is, uh, a, is that much higher than the average of the U.S., and, and that gives you another method. And, and when we, uh, uh, we did our budget, our forecast for, for Michigan, we said Michigan uh, is uh, bigger by like 20, 30 percent in population than, uh, than New Jersey. But the, the median household income is 30 percent lower uh, than in New Jersey. And, and we saw that that should have an impact on the average revenue per user, not to the extent of 30 percent, because uh, we are going after uh, players with a higher disposable income, but let's say about 15% was, uh, I think, our assumption. And what we've seen so far, uh, especially on, on first-time depositors in their first month, is that their growth span is about 8% lower than what we see today uh, in New Jersey. Uh, and that, I think, is, uh, is pretty encouraging. Uh, in terms of churn rates of new players, uh, we are seeing lower churn rates uh, in Michigan than we see in, uh, in New Jersey. This is probably in part because it's, it's a new market, so the early adopters are probably the most motivated players. Uh, but definitely uh, no bad surprise uh, here uh, uh, either. And in terms of cost per acquisition, that's not something that, that, that we disclose, but what I can say is that today our cost per acquisition of new players is lower in Michigan than it is in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in New Jersey. Uh, even if the market has grown uh, 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 so fast. So uh, overall, really, really positive about the, 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 the Michigan opportunity, and we'll see in other states. Uh, but, but I think globally your, your economics are going to be pretty, pretty similar in terms of return on investment, I mean, the, the, the time uh, uh, it takes for your cross gaming revenue to recoup your your, uh, uh, your cost per acquisition, for instance, I think should be uh, fairly similar. The churn rate should be fairly similar. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, 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 gradual increase in the average revenue per user and lifetime value, we hope, uh, should be similar. Understood. Helpful and interesting. If I can ask just one more, if you don't mind, sure. uh, around, <coughs> pardon me, the, um, the live dealer studio expansion. Yep. Uh, where you know a, a, a fair portion of it is you know for Golden Nugget, and in other cases, if I'm correct, I think other operators are using that studio on a B2B basis. Um, yeah, how do you? What is your vision for you know that product specifically over time? Uh, it is you know are those other operators just you know sort of building? A beachhead so they can do it themselves. Um, you know, how unique and proprietary is what you have and defensible ultimately is, you know, what you have with it, which obviously is going going pretty well so far. Yeah, sure. So I mean if we go 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 back to the genesis of uh, of, of that project for us, uh, at, at at that time, back in twenty fifteen, uh, we really believed that live dealer was a, a, a big missing part in the uh, offering of uh, all online casinos in New Jersey, and we went to uh, to talk to a number of uh, of B two B suppliers who usually set up a studio and serve pretty much all brands in the market, and and mo and and all of the big guys basically didn't want to come to New Jersey because they thought the market was too small and it would be uh, uh, too too hard for them to uh, um, to make money. 
So uh, we decided to do it uh, on our own and uh, and um, and did this partnership with uh, with Azugi and and that really is the reason why we did it uh, in in the first place to be honest. So. Um, uh, uh, the situation right now is a bit uh, different because uh, uh, the likes of uh, Evolution Gaming today and Playtech tomorrow are building studios in uh, uh, in a number of states uh, in the U.S. So, so we don't have the need to build a studio in order to, to offer live dealer. Still, uh, uh, for us, it's um, it's uh, it's good because we are controlling the the operation. It's really our our staff. Um, and and our own studio, so uh, we we have some cost savings because of that, and also uh, because as you mentioned, we are uh, acting here as a B two B supplier as well. We have uh, six brands uh, using that studio today, and um, and uh, the combination of all these brands means that the activity has grown tremendously, especially last year. And today we are close to reaching capacity in our uh, in our existing studio. So we will uh, increase our capacity from uh, 18 to uh, uh, to 33 tables, and out of the uh, uh, 15 additional tables, uh, I think we will have probably around 10 or 12 of them pre-booked already uh, by some brands using the studio uh, uh, in uh, uh, in in short order. So. Uh, it's uh, it's really a good asset. Uh, these are also tactical revenues uh, uh, for us that are that are good to um, that are good to have. And in other states, we will use uh, the studio of uh, of B two B provider. So that's going to be Evolution Gaming for us in uh, in Michigan and 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 Pennsylvania uh, as a start. Right now. Uh, all these states uh, have asked that the live dealer studio uh, serving the, 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 the local residents uh, uh, is located in the state, uh, but it might change because I think that mm, you used to have some uncertainty around the, the way of for gaming. Uh, uh, you don't have that uh, um, anymore. So if at any point in time uh, we are authorized by a regulator to use our own studio in other states, uh, of course we will do that, and that would be uh, that would be a positive. Perfect. Thank you very much. And that was our last question at this time. I will turn the call back over to Tim and Virginia for closing remarks. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we uh, very much feel great uh, about the future, and uh, it's a great industry to be in, and uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to build this out. And we're always available, Thomas or Mike or any of us, even myself, if we can ever help you all or answer more questions. And uh, we're so excited about Michigan, like I said. It kind of validates our strategy. Uh, and our conviction to how future the bright, how bright the future is, and and that we can get to positive EBITDA in, in just 24 months now in a major state like Michigan. So thank you all very much, and everybody have a great week. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.